put this computer down. Okay, hello, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the CAC UK Freedom Friday session. And this is the legal surgery today. I'm Mina Jew, I'm the founder of CAC UK. And CAC UK, CAC UK stands for Class Action COVID UK. We've been working since October 2020 on a legal case, which is a, a class action against government for lockdown harms. COVID har uh, harms from COVID measures. And these Freedom Friday sessions that we've been running uh, since sort of about February um, 20 last year. Um, so we've been running for about a year now. And we, we, we do them three Fridays in the week, uh, in the month. So the first, second and third Fridays. On the first Friday, we kick off with a spiritual session um, where we, you know, strengthen our, our spirituality. And uh, on the second Friday, we focus on communications. And on the third Friday, we normally focus on illegal surgery. Now, this has been a bit different because I've had some personal crisis, uh, crisis come up. So we've had to postpone it. So this is the fourth Friday, the 28th of January. And uh, we're doing this session today. So first of all, I am going to give you um, an update on the CAC UK class action. And before I do, I'm going to pause this recording uh, because this is just for you guys who are on the who are on the session. Now. Okay, so that so we, we've just had a quick um, update on the CAC UK class action case, and um, I'm just going to spend. I'm going to hand over to Helen today, but. Um, We've got about five minutes, five, ten minutes before I hand over to Helen. So rather than me just carry on talking, um, does anybody, and if you can put your hand up electronically or, or physically, then we can see, does anybody have a question or an issue that they want to uh, talk about or discuss or ask? And you are allowed to unmute yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I have uh, um, some things that I'd like to talk about. Hi, Pauline. Um, yeah. I, hi. I, this is my first time being here. So forgive me if I'm not following all the correct protocols. Um, uh, this is it's part of my uh, living where I am at the moment. And, and it's nothing to do with COVID. And um, I wanted to know about the buying and selling of my property because I understand there are there's stamp duty and there's there's the conventional way of selling a property and um, but with things like the the courses i've done with the people's lawyer there's lots of things that aren't necessary um now if if you are aware of your um your rights that you don't have to be paying stamp duty you don't have to be paying okay. taxes all those so, sorts um, of things so thanks, Pauline. I'm, I'm just going to say um, we don't cover um, those kinds of issues. So okay. this um, this legal surgery is solely designed to help people struggling with the COVID crisis. So uh -huh. um, COVID measures and COVID harm. So we're, we're only focused on that, really. Things like, okay, you know, asserting know. your mask mandate and things like that. So, you know, all the issues around COVID, such as masks, testing, vaccines, that kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Well, I seem to have done very well with that. I have got myself a medical exemption. Um, that that um, prevents me from being tested, uh, having a vaccine or um, any kind of quarantine as well. So I've got that's good. That and have you got that through the one one nine NHS system, or have you got that? Yes. So yeah, I got it through right. the well. Yeah, yeah, through the one one nine system. And can you tell us? Uh, would you, would you be happy to tell us uh, what was the specific? Um, issue that allowed you to have this exemption um there were quite a number of them um i'm medically retired anyway i've been retired for since i was about 34 and um so in the in the medical world i have a severe enduring and incurable health condition which is rather handy at the moment um, i've been following a system of natural life which is a cleaning process. So um, what has happened in the last couple of years, and I've been able to take photographs of it, is uh, how my skin has erupted at the point of insertion where uh, needles have been put into me in the past. 
Right. So this is the, if you like, the documented evidence as to the adverse effects that needles have on me. So there's okay. that, and then there's the psychological uh, uh, trauma I experience when I, if I'm going to book a flight, for instance, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to go right up until the very last night. So those two factors were enough to um, convince my uh, GP alongside the promic forms where I could use utilize the um, the language that was used with the, the two promic forms. Right. One right. from um, self certification, which I put on the 119 form. And then the, the I had a promic form from a health professional that um, signed off on the, the, the boxes that I ticked. Right, that's brilliant. Was, that, that's really good, uh, Pauline. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, mm -hmm. It's really good to know, and I'm sure people on this call will, will be happy to know these kind of things. Can I just ask you one question? So would you say you have an understanding GP and did that help with this process? Um, I do have an understanding GP. He understands my condition very well uh, and enables much of the, if you like, alternative practices to go on, but doesn't take any interest in them. He's uh, So um, I do tread a kind of pretty thin line. Right. I, I, okay. I, happen, I happen to have a consultant psychiatrist from 20 odd years ago who has now just retired that um, would write, you know, more um, favorable uh, reports for me. Okay, that's great. So, because, and that's in line with what I've been um, saying to people, which is that you need to find an understanding GP. Um, and, you know, not all GPs are the same. So, if you're, yeah. if you're, if your regular GP at your surgery um, yeah. uh, doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't want to sign the form, then somebody else will. And the other thing is also that um, there's there's the one one nine uh, system, but there's also the Promic, uh, which you which you've mentioned. And actually, we've got uh, we've got a couple of minutes. Um, I've been told by you know several people that Promic forms, which are not the um, official NHS forms are working in set in various settings and we've got Pete on the call. Pete I don't know if you want to share and explain uh, how your success with the private uh, private forms if you don't mind. And unmute yourself. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can I, also, can I also yep. add that I also had a naturopathic doctor that was very, very okay. supportive and yep. um, her report was pretty convincing. Okay. So it was a number of different healthcare professionals that added in my case. Okay. All right. That's great. Thanks. So, yeah, essentially, so I'm going to, I don't know if... Um, he can unmute himself, doesn't look like we can hear you. So what I'll just say is that, um, so the, the, some GPs are really not want, and, and there's a strong push for GPs to deny these um, claims for exemption. Um, but the Promic forms are working and I'll put the link in the chat, which is promic.info. So these are forms that you can download, um, you can tick boxes and you can go to your GP or you can use it as self-exemption. And I'm told that they're working for overseas flights, they're working for restaurants, they're working for theatres and various settings. So they do work and it's a case of asserting yourself. And this is going to segue me into Helen's um, thing, actually. So I'm going to introduce Helen Miller. She is um, an actress. We actually we've actually met um, kind of online through a spiritual group and we, we, we're part of the same kind of spiritual family in terms of we practice buddhism and helen is highly intuitive um she's uh she's deeply connected and um she, you know she's 
She's a really um, inspiring person I have found in the short time that I've known her. Um, natural leader. She's So we f- we found each other because I'd formed a, a small group of um, awake Buddhists and, and then we got in touch with Helen and Helen had formed this group which had about 40 members in on, on Signal and um, my group all joined that group so we kind of amalgam- amalgamated and it's now about 80 strong but you know we, we sort of have uh, similar spiritual backgrounds to share and, and chat and, and talk about what's happening um, but Helen is um, an actress She's also um, a coach. She's an international um, coach and teaches businesses and individuals communication skills. So I'm um, I'm going to ask Helen to unmute herself and uh, and come on the call. I'm going to try. I'm trying to find you. Hopefully, we'll see you in a sec. Um, so Helen, would you please just um, introduce yourself? Tell us what you do and what's brought you here, and and what is it? You've got a range of skills that you you um, you use together in harmony, and it's you know it's very unique because you you've got a re- you know it's kind of like you know um, I sometimes think I have kind of such a, a wide variety of different skills, and it's it's it makes you kind of uniquely able to do specific things, and I think you've harvested these and and put yourself in a in a sort of niche position where you are able to help people. So can you can you tell us a little bit about your background and, and what you do? Yeah, so thanks so much, Mina. It's lovely to be here on this side of the camera and meet everybody. So I became an actor because I've always been fascinated by people and what drives people to do what they do and how their inner workings are so different to mine and understand how different people see the world and uh, did mainly do a lot of Shakespeare when I before all this kicked off um, and in Shakespeare says I hold you know the point of theatre is to hold a mirror up to nature so that we can then grow from realising what we're actually doing to ourselves and each other. Now alongside acting uh, which I started in 2006 professionally 2009 I, I realised that the same skill set and the same curiosity I have about people could open up a an additional way of of being a freelancer in terms of going into businesses and helping business professionals of all different levels in all different places understand how to communicate better. And I've had a huge amount of training from very sort of mind orientated psychometric testing that I can do with people to much more intuitive. And I had a huge spiritual awakening 2014. And then I realized a lot of the gifts or skills that I had in acting and in the coaching work was actually through really deep intuition. My coaching career went really well and I used to travel around the world sometimes I'd be in three different countries a week working with C-suite to shop floor to you know all kinds of industries from the NHS to pharma to schools to cars to whatever and one of my bugbears because I didn't was often working with industries that I found challenging but most importantly was that the real transformation that the work is able to bring would generally mean that most people would leave their jobs because they'd realize they weren't happy and that they were capable of so much more and I'd give them the courage to realize they can live their life differently but one of the benefits of when all the lockdowns happened was that I was able to start doing this work with people one to one as many people were awakening and realizing that actually once you strip back their work life to just the actual work they were no longer interested in doing it so I've helped a lot of people transition and find new ways of being now I've been aware of all this since it kicked off and have found all the things that I used to do no one will employ me anymore but it the benefit of that is that I'm actually really really passionate about being on this side and building the new world and helping people create a new way that is really aligned with being human beings rather than machine doings so what I am able to do and what I'm here to do today is to give a really clear overview of the four main styles of communication that are used between each other and we all can do all of them and it's not about personality it's about preference and communication and i want 
you to be able to understand that you do do all of them you'll you'll especially slide into certain ones with certain people but there'll be one that when the pressure kicks in is your deferred communication style where we come into conflict or challenge is when we have to have conversations or dialogue or communication with people who are the opposite to us under pressure because what we tend to do as human beings is become a much more heightened version of us, so our ego gets triggered, than move towards the other person's style. It doesn't mean matching them, but it means flexing your natural comfort zone to incorporate these ways of communicating so that you're seen, so that you're heard, and what you say lands and affects change with that person. So I'm going to run through that um, quite top level. And some of you who may have done some of this training before will realize I'm actually pulling together about five or six different models because they all have their benefits and their weaker points. And I've sort of accumulated them into one, which I think is really helpful. And I'm going to I invite you, so if you haven't got a pen or paper, to I have got a slide, but I hate slides all sorts of reasons i do a lot of training people how to not use slides so I've, and then you've got the notes for yourself so that you can keep them and take them away so if you want to grab a pen and paper i recommend that or if you're digital or on a tablet or whatever and then if there's time i'm going to open up to take one or maybe two people who've got a situation coming up that is challenging a conversation that they've got to have in real life and I will do a mini version of what I would do in sessions um, with people because I'm able to, through my intuition and my acting and all of those things, get a really clear indication of what that person's motivations and psychology is. Everybody hates the word role play, but I make it a really safe space and all you're doing, I'm the one role playing, all you're doing is practicing what you would say in this conversation in a safe space to then get feedback about what is triggering for me to hear, what's gonna help unlock me to hear and what's going on inside this person's head. Um, and then we can do it again, I can break it down and then I can give you a whole lot of toolkit. If they say this, if they say that, if this happens, if that happens. It's not legal advice, It's it's communication and human advice and bringing that spiritual insight in as well. So if that's helpful, that's my aim to help as many people um, as I can today. So if you've got any questions as I go through, put them in the chat and um, I will try to cover those as well because I want it to be as clear as possible. So first of all, um, and my email you can see at the bottom of my uh, face as well. So if you need to get me afterwards, you can drop me a message. My website is hearthealer.co.uk. Um, I used to have a very corporate one, but I, I'm not pursuing that work at this time because <laughs> no one will employ me and this is far more important. So get me on hearthealer.co.uk. You'll also see the weekly groups I run and various other things. So if you want to do a big big square that fills up the paper um, and then draw that across through that so you've got four squares you've got a four square model two squares on the top two squares at the bottom okay once you've got these four squares the axis at the side of the paper nearest for the margin would be on your left hand side that axis is going is about energy and volume so at the bottom of the page it's the quieter aspect people who are maybe perceived as being more introverted um, and then at the top extroverted i try not to use introvert extrovert because it's often misused because that isn't about how outgoing or loud somebody is but it's about where they regroup and recharge and some people are very quiet, but they recharge their energy field by being with others. And other people are very loud and extroverted, but recharge by having their alone crash time. So this is more about how much space, visually, energy somebody takes up um, in, in, in a room. Um, 
that's that axis. The axis along the bottom, nearest the margin on the left hand side is people who are more relationship focused and at far end are more task focused. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to stop, start in the top right hand corner. So this top quadrant, these are people who are very, Mina's showing me, uh, Mina's holding it up, great, yes. And I have got this on a slide that I'll fling up afterwards, but um, I don't want you to see all the information at once. So the top right hand corner, these are people and again, this is not personality styles, it's preferred communication under pressure. People who go to this style, which take, you know, they're visually very present, very strong energy. You're that you're aware they're in the space and they're very task focused. This is represented with the color red. And in the red box, they the term or the archetypal energy is leader director. So if there's an emergency on a desert island and you're all there together, these are the people who are going to start trying to organize, who are going to take charge. And initially, that's where they're going to go to. That is represented by the word I. I want you to do this. I'm telling you to do that. And they are motivated. Now, these are these are the important bits. What motivates this kind of preferred communication style is by success, visible, achievable success, and they're motivated by results. Their biggest fear is failure. So they're going to they're going to avoid failure at all costs and they're going to want to be seen as being successful. They want to they want to get those results in. In terms of the logistics of their preferred communication, it's clear and succinct. And so ideally, it's going to be bullet points, whether that be vocally or on text, whatever is going to take the least amount of time to get that information. Do not send them a six page treaty on why you want them to make a decision. They won't read it. Now, the um, the sort of win win with a red the way to the way if you know you're going to have a conversation with somebody who's mostly red is respect their time and status. Okay, I really appreciate you mate taking the school with me today. I know you don't have long, so let me get a cut down to the chase. Small talk, how are the kids? Blah blah blah. All of that is going to be seen as fluffy and irrelevant. Now I'm taught, I'm do going through this pace. And I'm going through this as broad brush strokes. There are, um, you know, you could sort of close your eyes and drop your pen anywhere in that square. And the further towards either axis you are within that square is going to sort of determine how more of this you are or more of that you are. But I'm giving you the really clear, clean one off sort of brush strokes so you understand the model, first of all. And they also, um, they'd like to be, now this is where people often miss, get confused. They want to, you to impress them. And so what that means, what that will look like for somebody who's very red, is like credentialize yourself, hold yourself well, don't be intimidated by their strong presence. Um, they're, they're happy to blow their own trumpet. They want you to, to they want to hear how good you are too. Um, if you, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't really mean to, oh, why are you even here then? That's going to be the kind of reaction to that kind of energy. Um, they can be seen, I mean, all of these communication styles can be misinterpreted if it's not your preference. They could be seen as bullies, they could be seen as egotistical, but that isn't what's driving them. But they maybe wouldn't necessarily be too thrown to be told those things because what they're really motivated is if it gets the job done then that's what has to happen because that's their motivator because they are more task uh yeah sure i draw the full slide up um they're more task than relationship focused so so this is it as a model so 
we're up in this top right square at the top and I won't show you the next slide yet because I don't want you to see all the words. Um, okay, let me just stop and share, come back. Lovely. I hope that was okay to see the, get a little bit clearer there. Okay, sure. Great. So on that top line, next to red is yellow. So this is the same amount of energy, the same amount of ability to take up space and be seen, but it is somebody who's more relationship than task focused in their communication style. So yellow is represented by the word me. And these are people as an archetype of the visionaries, they're the entertainers. They're motivated by praise and recognition. In compared to, or somebody just unmute, unmuted, I'm going to ask you to mute because there's some rustling. So they're motivated by praise and recognition. So these are people who potentially you might think, okay, so I'm going to give you an archetype of the red. Alan Sugar is a really clear example of red uh, communication. You're fired. Two words, job done. It's simple. Okay. Um, yellow. Uh, visionary entertainer archetypal you could think of a lot of people on television um graham norton is very yellow in his communication style uh it's a lot of flamboyant i'd say creative or poppy language words that ping out a lot of visualization a lot of images a lot of anecdotes a lot of stories they are motivated by praise and recognition they want to be liked and they want to be seen for being good or nice or doing well at their job. Their biggest fear is rejection. So they might be the best salesperson in the world until it comes to closing, because closing holds rejection. Um, they're very creative, great ideas, but find, find it harder to complete a finisher. Preferred communication style is speaking. These are people really focused on human to human connection and they want to know about you they want to know where you went on holiday or that's you know or they want to know where you got that top or they're probably very likely to give compliments they'd love you to be complimented anything to do with compliments don't say it unless you mean it we're hardwired to know that but do all of this stuff is to do what feels right from within your communication zone. It's not trying to pretend, oh, you're yellow, I'll pretend to be like this because we read that as BS. Um, but it's just flexing, it can be very subtle, little tweaks to communicate to the conversations that can really make somebody feel that you are moving towards them, that they are being, you've got rapport. And if it's done artfully, because this is an art, not a science, it will be as natural as, because we do it naturally all the time when we're getting on with people. It's when we have discord, we, we, we become the opposite. <laughs> and these are tweaks that once you become conscious of, and you know it's going to be a challenging conversation, you can add them in consciously and it will help. It really helps oil those wheels. So um, yellows really want to be inspired, they want to be uplifted, um, and they want to be seen and heard. So it can really help to paint the picture. If you're asking a yellow to do something that they don't want to do, paint the picture of what it's going to be like, what's in it for them. So I know it'll be difficult for you to go to the line manager and say this, but imagine the benefit of blah, 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 blah. And if you know what their preferred communication style is, you can attach that benefit to what motivates them. So if you're selling the benefit of doing something to a, to a red communication style, you know, think about, you know, think about the results of success or for a yellow, you know, think about how many people will be talking about how great this is. Yeah, Mina. Sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to um, mention to everyone here that when uh, Helen's talking and discussing this and, and explaining this, can you try to keep in mind, because I know a lot of people are struggling with the mandate 
with jobs, with the NHS, you know, with GPs. So if you can try to keep in mind, if you're not already doing so, just to remind you, but because this whole thing is 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 um, builds into how we have these discussions to assert our legal rights, and and that's really what what I wanted this to yeah. um, portray with this. Obviously, it will, you know, it's, it's in every area of your life, but if you can try and keep that in mind, and then it will really help you with that those specific problems that we're all struggling with. Thanks, thanks, Helen. Yeah, thanks for yeah exactly, Mina. This is why I'm doing it um, because I think it's helpful for everything. I use it all the time, but it's it's specifically for people who are having really difficult conversations, whether that be with store owners, bosses, colleagues, family members, um, you know, the words that you have to find to talk to somebody about why you're not getting an injection or why you're not going to be able to go on the family holiday or whatever it is are going to be what you need to say. But if you understand that there is a communication piece difference, this is to help you have that conversation in a way that doesn't close it down. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, and then below red on the bottom line, uh, blue is the colour. And this is for people who are more task focused and less um, take up less energy as the red. So this is an analyst and a data uh, data are the words to do with the archetype. It, also IT, uh, it's a clue to where you can maybe find a lot of people who are interested in, the, who prefer this communication style. Um, their preferred communication style is via emails. Um, you can send them the six page treaty as long as you're not asking for a, a result and a response soon. <laughs> they want to go through that. They want all the information. They want to be able to plow through there. Um, they're motivated by order and control. They like to, um, and they are, okay, oh, great question, Rebecca. I'm going to come to that in a moment. Um, and then they are motivated, their biggest motivator in terms of their fear is disorder and chaos. So they, if they had to hand something in that, or also, or you could also say some people would say they're motivated by perfection, but perfectionist traits can be found in the other communication styles as well. Um, health and safety, very sort of drawn in, is in this field, um, a lot of analysis. The best way to communicate with somebody, easy wins, listen to them, don't rush them, don't finish their sentences, don't cut them off, especially if you're naturally read and you're motivated by time and just cutting to the chase. If you do that to a blue, they'll close down. You'll get a stony silence. Um, um, and they are really want to get, they want, because if they're looking for perfection, they don't want to cut corners. They need longer time frame to do stuff because they want to do it all thoroughly, double check it, make sure it's the best it can be. Um, then over to green. These are people who take up less space and energy, but are much more relationship focused. Archetypal energy is bridger and includer. It's about us. Us is the word that represents them. They're motivated by harmony and inclusivity. And their biggest fear is confrontation and disharmony. So, and these could be an email or a phone call, these people really. Um, they are, and if it's a difficult information for them to take, they probably prefer it in email so that they can have their own, their own reflection and emotional processing time before responding. Because they will, wouldn't want to upset you by seeming upset or saying the wrong thing when they receive the information because their focus is always on the other person. Now this can be the, to the detriment of knowing um, what the other person thinks. So if you have somebody who's very much this communication style, they might seem quite evasive. They might seem a little bit wishy-washy because they're always talking about, well, what do you want? What does everybody else want? We've got to consider this. We've got to consider that. Um, so there's no right or wrong about any of these styles. They all can be valuable and they can all be un unhelpful at times. Um, and in a team, you're going to want a mix of people. But when we're communicating with people under pressure, 
if you're naturally red under pressure and you have to communicate with a green, you're, the tendencies where we go as humans is we become more red. We become more short sentences and strong and I, and I want to do this. And, and, and the green will naturally become more and more, well, oh, okay, but if you want to, then okay, blah, blah, blah. But you haven't got the buy-in or you haven't got the commitment or they then won't follow through because they'll feel rail rotted, rail, rail rotted. I hope this is helpful as a, um, oh, and so uh, tips for communicating with greens, encourage them, include them, appreciate them, and try to make them realize that even if there's a uncomfortable process, overall the harmony of everybody is gonna be, or the unity. Um, there often be people who turn up to meetings with biscuits, um, that sort of thing, or clear all the cups away at the end. Um, Yes, I mean, we're all, there are people who, are, who can just go, oh, that's me. I mean, I personally, I'm quite a lot of red and yellow. If, I, if it's an environment I like, I'm much more yellow. If, I, if it's an environment that I find <laughs> I'm judgmental about, I tend to go more red. But I access green when I do my tax, blue when I do my tax return, I can be, you know, in uh, green where I'm helping a friend who's going through a tough time. So that's the overview to recognize where um you are is really helpful to recognize where another is is really helpful if you don't know oh the word for blue is analyst data oh and it's it it green is us yellow is me and red is i um so if you don't know who it is you're going to speak to go through the usual sort of if it's a phone call or an email that you would normally but if they're communicating with you first if it's an email look at whether if there's any telltale signs what kind of language are they using um i mean a typical red might just go um here's the here's the spreadsheet and then realize oh and then have to go back and go oh how was your weekend i hope i hope it was fun in france here's the spreadsheet Whereas a yellow will be like, oh, tell me about the weekend. Oh, I forgot the attachment. Um, so there are things like this that will allow you to kind of start to get clues about who it might be. Um, but of course, and the same as if, but if it's a cold call or if, you know, you've got to come and meet the solicitor now or whatever the situation, um, what is this grid or analysis called? This is my model, but I'm pulling together about six models. You can call it the heart healer model. <laughs> um, but I'm drawing on about six or seven other models, including Myers-Briggs, including Insights, including, um, oh, I mean, there's just heaps of them. They're essentially uh, C, uh, um, lots of acronyms of letters, uh, SDI um, as well, I'm drawing on um yes exactly we could have a good dating app with different colors risk um so yes you know it's me uh so how so then when you start speaking to somebody see if they're leading the conversation see where they go do they make small talk or does it feel like they're just they're not interested in the small talk and they want to get on with the conversation but they're doing it because they know you're meant to or are they really engaging with you um like two yellows having a business meeting might talk about golf or you know whatever's on telly for, for 45 minutes and then spend five minutes sealing signing the contract because they know that they need to get on and trust and recognize that person as a human 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 is really important to them but the reds might spend the whole time on the bullet points and the details and you know getting it and 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 never say never even know what each other's names are because that's not what they're motivated by um okay maybe we'll be so i hope that's helpful um if anybody has a situation that they would like to talk to me about now we can i can show you in this space um if exactly a, a mini version of maybe just the opening of a conversation rather than the whole thing I don't think we have time for about what I how I can support you but that I wanted to cover that so that you everybody has got a tool to take away 
So if anyone wants to unmute, um, there are a couple of hands up. I think they were up before. Or if anyone doesn't feel confident to do that, you can put something in the chat. Hello. Hi. Put my video in. Oh, video. Sorry, my video has been disabled. Um, it's Sharon. Um, thank you for that talk. That was really useful and handy. Um, right. I just maybe it's something it will help others as well. I'm due to meet with uh, my GP on Tuesday because I need to get my son exempt from the vaccine mandate. Um, but he needs to travel overseas regularly to compete um, in some sports events. Um, I'm quite nervous about having the conversation with the GP mm -hmm. and um, yes, yeah, so any tips on how to, you know, manage that conversation would be really helpful. Um, do you know them? Do you have a relationship with them? Yes, I do. I mean, you know how it is with GPs, you, you know, there's plenty of different GPs, but this particular doctor we have seen him a number of times over the years. I'm Indian, he's Indian. Um, he's mentioned, you know, Ayurvedic type of treatments before, or, you know, trying to sort things out naturally where you can. So he's given, you know, I'm hoping that he's going to be a bit open to understanding why I have concerns about my son taking the vaccine and, you know, relying on our own natural immunity to see us through. Um, yes. Okay. So, um, if we were to do this in depth, I'd, I'd ask you a million questions right now so I could understand a lot more about this doctor specifically. Yeah. Um, do you, and but that's helpful. What I would do you, off the top of your head, do you, do you have a, an idea of what his preferred communication style is? Well, I'm seeing, I'm thinking red in the sense because he's a GP, you know, they've got like 10 minutes and yeah. I've got a feeling that it's going to be their time is going to be really important. He is quite. Uh, to the point so I'm gonna I'm thinking I need to approach him you know as a red and uh yeah just like how do, how do I get my point across without you know feeling like I'm just gonna just overload him with all the information of why my son shouldn't take it right okay so this is actually really helpful um specific industries have a color of what that the professional looks like yeah. um, person. So the city where I spent a long time working with people in finance, they're very red. Like it seemed to, it's good to be red. And if you're, you know, a bit of yellow, but the, you know, there's, that's a sort of very um, leader orientated industry. Um, working in the NHS, there was a lot, well, working with counselors, maybe there was a lot more green um you know working in the arts is a lot more yellow but because he is under time constraint that doesn't mean it's his preferred communication style if you've spoken about ayurveda that uh, when I say ayurvedic i mean i call it ayurvedic when i could talk about traditional indian home remedies i just mm. put it under that blanket of ayurveda um right. so he wouldn't have necessarily used that term he might have just said look you know mix them up turmeric with honey and okay you know that kind of thing yes yes okay um so what i would do is recognize definitely recognize there's a time constraint saying listen yeah. i know that you're probably that this we've only got 10 minutes i understand you're under a lot of pressure right now and what i'm about to say might not make your this situation any easier but i really want to have my time to be able to convey to you the impact that you taking this action will have on me, me and my son's life. And okay. succinctly, um, what I would do is brainstorm before you have that conversation, all the points yeah. that are, are a positive outcome from him getting this exemption, and then all the negatives. And then choose the ones that the most important ones that are relevant to that doctor. Your doctor potentially isn't going to necessarily care that your son will lose his job or that or or I don't know. Or... The long and short of it is, is that for my son to compete, this is how I see it. For my son to compete, they're asking him to take the risk with his life, basically. Yeah. Because death 
is a side effect of this vaccine, particularly for young teenagers or long term heart conditions, which means they cannot compete anymore, which means taking the vaccine could put my son. You know, he won't have a, a sporting career, so that's how I see it, you know, they're asking us to make this choice. Uh I totally agree with you. I mean, <laughs> totally agree with you. Uh, I could blow up buildings with the amount of rage that I'm able to tap into mm. about the situation. But you're, what we what we always have to do is think about what's in it for the M, what's in it for the doctor. Yeah. So could I understand this is a difficult conversation to have, Mr. Doctor, Mrs. Doctor, could you please help me to help you what are the challenges or obstacles that you have to giving me this? How can we, how can I give you what you need so that you can sign this exemption? Right, okay. And if he says, well, I'm going to find me 45 pounds, I'll give you 45 pounds. Yeah. What else? So you're making it easy for them. If you spend yeah. the whole 10 minutes saying about my son's career, my son's job, my son's fertility, um, he probably already is aware of that at this point in time. What he's going to be thinking about is the crap he's going to get when he walks out that room if he signed the exemption. So if you can think beforehand about what is what will they be thinking when you they hear that information and what are they motivated by and what are they scared of and how can you alleviate that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I would do a, love to do a big session. We could really go through this, but in a in a nutshell and something that I think is Maybe going to be I able do. to move that forward. Maybe um, on Tuesday, the meeting, I don't know if you've got any time between now and Tuesday, maybe I'll reach out to you individually. Yeah, drop me an email and we can grab and um, we can drop me drop me an email and then I can if you want to grab a session. Absolutely. I can make time for that to happen so that you're lovely because I know how important it's this too important this thing. Yeah, I'm so nervous about it. So, uh, OK, lovely. Thank you. Thanks for your advice. That's all right. Thank you. Is there anybody else? I saw a few hands go up. I saw the chat move quite fast. Um, we're also in extraordinary times as there's just the brainwashing has been so strong. Um, so there is a logic using logic within certain conversations doesn't get get you <laughs> doesn't get you where perhaps it would have done before, um, which is why we have to understand people's fears because so much of what the disconnect disconnect and the dissonance right now is motivated by the biggest fear. Um, but on a deeper level, what does it mean if they admit some of this is true, if not all of it? Um, yeah, ah, Mina's waving. Yeah. Oh, Helen. Yeah, so, um, Helen, yeah, I, I realise the time is now five to one. So this uh, this session is always uh, fin finishes at one. And I make it an hour because, I mean, it could go on, you know, hour and a half. But the reason it's an hour is because when we started this, um, you know, 12 to one is an ideal sort of lunchtime zone um and people have to go and have busy lives so so i'm going to round up the call um to close at one so thank you so much helen um and just before i round up i'm just going to say um obviously we've shared helen's email address uh which is helen at hearthealer.co.uk you'll correct me um and if anybody does want to get in touch with helen to uh to do some personal work so i'm just going to um, there it is, Helen at hearthealer.co.uk. I'm just going to pop it into the chat as well at hearthealer.co.uk. And Helen, yeah, is that the best way for people to contact you if they want to, uh, if they want to have personal advice? Yeah, it is. And my website is hearthealer.co.uk, and I have a weekly group called Midweek Medicine, um, which is a drop-in week, different theme, which is full of like minded people um, around the world. And uh, I what I do is I talk about the energy and the, you know, there's a sharing circle and I talk about the energies and I give people, you know, advice and support from the spiritual and the practical um, aspects each week as well. So if people okay. 
don't want a one-to-one but they kind of like my vibe or want to get involved in more support um, and that's an ongoing thing I have thank you and you're on YouTube as well I have a YouTube channel I do a video each week as well on Tuesdays live every Friday and I also <laughs> sell ceremonial grey cacao which is an amazing Fantastic. tool for supporting your immune system and also your mood yeah. and well-being yeah. Brilliant. So no, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for being here. And as I said, you know, Helen, oh, Helen yeah. is multi. Um, I'm just going to actually, because uh, I'm sorry, um, I'm going to say no because um, I've got to close off the call. But if you can pop something into the chat, because I don't want to go over one o'clock. Sorry about that, Pauline. Um, I'm just going to a uh, couple of things. Firstly, I've promised in the past when we've had particularly ha had our spiritual sessions and people have shared details and stuff in the chat log. Unfortunately, where I've promised to send the chat log on, um, I've not been able to do it because some of the chat is because I receive all the chat. So some of the chat is private messages. And I, and I don't know, you know, without spending hours and hours like curating, curating it and, and editing it. I, which I don't have time for, I can't send that on to everybody because some of them are private messages. So I apologize for that. But if anybody wants to save the chat from this session today, um, you go to the bottom of the chat and you click on where it says the three dots and it just click on save chat and you can save today's chat for yourself. So you've got a chance about a minute or so to do that now if you want to. Um, lastly, um, thank you everyone for being here and um, Obviously, CAC UK is uh, CACUK.UK. And um, if you want to subscribe, if you're not already subscribed, you can subscribe to that. We've also got a donation page. Um, so all donations are welcome because everything that we've been doing for CAC UK um, has been voluntary. So we're not paid for this. Donations go towards building a legal case. Um, and as and when, when we get this fully on the road, which it isn't yet, it's really just bubbling up. So when we get it fully on the road, um, that's when we'll do a big push, a bigger push for donations. Um, and people have, you know, have had one person saying to me, um, I'm not willing to donate unless I know this detail and that detail and that detail. And unfortunately, I just cannot disclose those details that I've been asked for as yet, because everything has to be confidential as and when um, the, the time when we can disclose the details that have been asked for is when we've submitted what's called a statement of claim. So the process is you do a letter before action. Some of you would have seen these from other cases that have gone on. So you do a letter before action. This is the legal protocol. And then following that, if you don't get a satisfactory response or a satisfactory resolution, because you've got to show the course that you've tried to resolve things out of court, uh, before wasting the court's time and then you go to a statement of claim and that's when you tell the person that I will now be taking legal proceedings against you and that's when um, the statement of claim is the entire legal pretty much the legal argument that will be filed and that's when you'll see all of the details so I'm really sorry that I can't give that away right now and the reason is because obviously we don't want certain people to be seeing what we're working on until we're ready to to go so I hope that's okay. Um, and um, so that's it for today. Thank you so much. And um, hopefully, so next week, it's going to be this virtual session. Um, and uh, the, the reason behind that is a lot of people are being saying this is a spiritual war and it's, and it's all about, you know, good and evil and, and all of this. And the spiritual session is where we, um, I share the chant that I do, which is Nam Yoringa Ko, and I talk to you about the, the, the faith and aspects of faith. So next week's session is all about faith. Um, how does it work? And uh, hopefully you can join us for that. So thank you. And I will uh, end the recording now. Thank you.